people involved in minicamp camper conversions find choosing a power system confusing, and they're afraid they might buy a system that isn't right for them. There's a different approach that could make your power system decision an easier one. When it comes to your minivan camper conversion journey, a lot of people find power systems confusing to understand. Minivan camping has exploded in recent years for tons of great reasons, but also portable power systems, they have exploded too. There are so many product options and applications, and to make it even worse, the advice on forums is so all over the place, it's dizzying to try to make sense of it all. The average minivan camper conversions are very tight on space. So the solution that's most common is a compact portable solar generator over a do-it-yourself system because they're a lot less compact. The bottom line is that people are afraid of buying the wrong things for their power needs because advice and choices are so varied. What we can do is simplify this all by taking a less common approach. A good number of people asking for small portable power systems advice really don't know how they work. Much of the advice given on forums are from people who assume the person asking has a basic understanding. So you can see it's not uncommon to see this gap between people looking for answers and people giving advice. When I say understanding how solar generators work, I'm not referring to the technical side of their components. I'm speaking to the user experience. I'm speaking to understanding a day in the life of using a small solar generator. Advice on solar generators also varies because minivan campers are a very varied group. Some are weekenders, others are long-term, some drive a lot and explore everywhere, while others prefer parking it for a long time and being in solitude. Budgets vary. Levels of interest in electronics vary. Some see minivanning as an affordable step down from hotels. Others see it as a huge step up from backpacking. When I say average minivanner, it's a person looking for the most compact package at a lower cost that does meet their minimal power needs. The most they're willing to spend for a small-scale portable power system is no more than six to $800. The best-selling solar generators are either 300-watt or 500-watt sizes. Some advice givers are people who have converted full-size vans that often have the space for a system much larger than 500 watts, not realizing the greater space limitations of minivan camper builds. This space limitation is what makes small-scale solar generators so popular with the minivan crowd. A common saying for people building campers from full-size vans is that every inch counts. Well, in minivans, Every inch matters even more, and as important, every dollar spent matters even more, too. Another knowledge gap piece comes in when people are attracted to minivan camper builds that don't have much experience in basic camping. They're trying to imagine living their usual routine, living out of a vehicle as kind of a downsized version of living in a conventional home because, well, they just don't have the personal experience as a reference point. The most common solar generator sizes for minivan campers, as I've said before, is 300 or 500 watt sizes. So those two sizes are what I'm going to be using as a baseline. For minivan campers that need more power than 500 watts, Let's say your electrical needs are above average for most minivan campers, and you'll either need to give up more interior space and money, or adapt your lifestyle to changes that rely on using less electricity. We're going to take a look at quickly understanding how small portable power systems work. A lot of what I see on public forums are people designing a minivan camper build saying, I've watched a ton of YouTube videos, read a ton of blogs and forum posts, and I still don't know what to buy to fill in that portable power piece of that puzzle. Basically what they're saying is that despite all of the information, they still aren't confident in their grasp of how solar generator power systems actually work. 
A good amount of confusion around solar generators is simply the learning curve in understanding that industry terminology. So, in place of electrical terms, what I'll do is use time as a basis to explain things. So, there are only going to be two phases that you'll need to grasp. Power in time and power out time. Let's set up a perfect world baseline to understanding these two phases and their shared dynamics using the two most common small-scale solar generators used, the 300 and the 500 watt. A perfect world would look like a perfectly clear sky on a sunny summer day with the simplest of use scenarios. In the simplest scenario, during one full day, you'll be fully charging your solar generator within 10 hours during daylight and using power overnight over the other remaining 14 hours of the day. Here's what power in time would look like. What this simple graphic shows is most common ways to get power into a solar generator over the time involved for each of those methods. If we start charging a solar generator at 7 a.m. for each of the methods, a standard electric outlet fully charges the 300 watt generator by 11 a.m. and the 500 watt by 3 p.m. Charging with a 100 watt solar panel is a lot slower. The 300 watt unit would charge by 1 o'clock p.m. and the 500 watt by 5 o'clock p.m. Charging the unit from a 12 volt outlet in a driving car is the very slowest. A 300 watt unit would charge by 2 p.m. And the 500 watt unit probably wouldn't be practical to charge with a 12 volt power system because that would take driving nonstop for 16 hours. For the power out phase after the sun goes down, the user won't have 100% of that rated capacity. What they'll have is about 80% of a lithium based solar generator to use since it's never a good practice to drain the system of all of the power it holds. For a 300 watt unit, that's a usable 240 watts, and for the 500 watt unit, a usable 400 watts. Let's say over the course of the night, you powered a phone and camera recharge, ran a light for a couple hours, ran a fan while you slept for eight hours, and the next morning, what your battery charge percent on the solar generator would look like. On the 300 watt unit, it would show 53% full, and on the 500 watt unit, 72% full. So that's kind of a good look at a day in the life of charging a solar generator, using it at night, and then seeing what you'd wake up with. In the real world, there are quite a few things that can change that perfect world picture. They mostly circle around the environment and how that affects solar charging. The perfect world specifications, well, they're created under a laboratory controlled optimal condition uh, setting. In the real world, the uh, things that affect solar energy collection are pretty varied. Anything less than perfectly clear skies. Even a hardly noticeable hazy sky reduces the sun's energy. The season. As seasons change, the length and intensity of daylight changes, and both solar panel efficiency and battery charging is impacted by different temperatures. Your current geographic region, the amount of sun energy really differs in various geographic environments. Shading, any shading from any objects severely limits solar panel output. The time of day matters. During dawn and dusk, sunlight energy is reduced as it has to travel through more of the Earth's atmosphere before it hits the ground. For the solar panel itself, things that impact its actual efficiency are the angle that it is to the sun and the quality of electrical connectors and wiring. They also influence power moving from the solar panel and into the solar generator. In real-world solar generator use, capacity used every day or should be just a fraction of the total that you have. So it should be rare for somebody to need to completely recharge the unit. We'll cover more on that in a minute. The faster charge time of the 300, that's an appealing feature for a lot of people. Today, the 500 watt size is usually the upper limit because, well, it's on the high side of the average budget. 
It's also the largest unit a 100 watt solar panel can expect to fully charge within one day of sunlight. Although that could be changing fast with evolving technologies. Taking a look at a different approach to meeting your needs. The usual approach to sizing a small portable solar generator is to estimate the power needs per day and use that total as a minimum solar generator size. You can find quite a few useful power use estimating tools right online. The problem with that top-down approach is that estimates usually differ quite a bit from real-world use. Also, it really doesn't encourage finding ways to conserve electricity. And often, people can get by with a lot less than they think they need. In addition, buying what you can't afford today may not be all that you wish for, but it's better than an all-or-nothing choice. The habits we have in using unlimited power when we are on grid, they need a shift when using power off-grid. We need to kind of recalibrate to see power as a limited resource and then get accustomed to being able to manage its use. By stepping away from conventional online content and conversation, we can choose to focus on how a person's resources can point to a solution. It's more of a bottom-up approach. When designing a minivan camper conversion for most people, portable power isn't a need. It's more of a convenience feature. Its purpose is to keep small electronic devices topped off with power. And convenience features are usually ruled by these three resources, space, time, and money. When that's applied to small portable power systems, that means buying the unit that you have room to store that you can charge within one day and is at or below the budget that you have to spend. Then you budget your power use to the amount of power you can afford to spend spread out over the actual time that you anticipate between good weather charging days. What this means to the average minivan camper today is a solar generator and solar panel combination sized 500 watts or less that fits into the space of about a cubic foot or less and costs less than $800. If a person finds in the future that they have the need, the space, and the money resources to expand, they can buy a second unit and use both of them. That's a good strategy because that also provides an advantage of having a backup, having some power if one unit fails. Also a somewhat recent thing are factory made and designed expansion battery packs intended to be added to a smaller solar generator for increasing its future capacity. And that'll just about wrap it up. I'm not going to be pointing to any brands or models because the solar generator market keeps changing and fast. New companies, new models, and approved features, they're constantly evolving. Also, there never seems to be any shortage of online reviewers doing all those brand comparisons.